Hi everyone, Dan here. I want to talk about some small but important changes that we've made in the filter stack in On1FX. What we really wanted to do was make it easier to tell which filters you've done masking work on. Let me show you how it works. I'm just going to start off by adding a filter to darken this rock wall above the pool of water. So I'm going to click on Add Filter. I'll use a Tone Enhancer. And I'll just bring the brightness slider down and maybe the highlight slider down a little bit. I just want to darken that wall. There we go. Now I like what it's done to the wall, but I don't like that it's made the water so much darker. So this is where I would use a mask. Now in the past, we always automatically created a mask on every layer. Now those masks are created on demand when you actually do a masking activity. If we look up here at the head of each filter layer, there's, of course, the check mark to turn it on and off. Right next to it is the new Add Mask icon. When you see this, that means there's no mask on the layer yet. And I can click on it, it'll automatically create a mask. Or I can simply use any of the masking tools on the left, and it'll create a mask on demand. I'm going to click on the button. The nice thing about doing that is it rolls down the masking section, it shows me the mask, and you notice how the icon and the larger mask thumbnail are larger than they used to be. It's also automatically selected the masking brush for me and put it in paint out mode. So now I can simply come in and paint away across the water where I don't want that to be. I'm going to make an adjustment here to my brush size and my brush feather, and now I'll just simply paint that effect off the water. There, you'll notice that the thumbnail and the icon have both updated to show me what the mask looks like. And if I close the filter and I open it back up again, it remembers that the mask thumbnail section should be open. The same thing happens if I open up the blending options. If I open the blending options and I close and open a filter, it remembers that blending options was selected. So it's sticky to show you what you want to see. All right, let's say I want to add another filter this time, and I want to take this top area, and I want to make it warmer. I'm just going to add another filter. Let's use a color enhancer this time. There we go. Now, the color enhancer has automatically detected that there was a little bit of a green cast, and it's helped me out by adding some magenta to help remove that. I'm going to crank it up and make it much warmer. I'll increase the vibrance as well, and maybe even add a little bit more magenta. really want to make that a much warmer, more desert-looking wall back there. Now that looks better, but I don't like what it's done to the water at the bottom. I can easily remove it from the water using the same mask that I already created on the Tone Enhancer. I'll just click back to my previous filter. I'll click on the Copy button in the Mask section. Go back up to my color enhancer, click add mask, and then paste. And now it'll paste that same mask in, removing that color adjustment from the water. All right, let's add one more filter. This time I want to make the water at the bottom a little bit more see-through. We'll add another tone enhancer. This time I'm going to Use the shadow slider to open up and brighten up those shadows. And I'll add a little bit of detail to it as well to make it a little bit more sharp and bring out some of those details in the rocks. There we go. That's probably a little too high. There we go. Now again, I like what it's done in the bottom, but I don't like what it's done in the top. So let's click on that mask button again. I'll paste in the mask. Remember, if we still have the mask held in our clipboard because we've used it before. Now that paints it off the water. We want to do the opposite. So I'll just go up to the mask menu and select invert mask. So there we go. Now we've applied that adjustment to just the water area instead. Now you notice on each filter that there's a trash can and a move handle on the right hand side. If I click on the move handle, all the filters will roll up and we'll go into move mode, where now I can simply grab that move handle and drag it around to change the order of the filters. And I can click on a trash can to delete a filter layer that I don't want. 
All right, there you go. There's some new ways to be able to tell which filter layers you have a mask on and make it easier to be able to delete and move filter layers inside of effects. Thanks for watching.